everyone welcome to the channel so i am going to be discussing the physical chemistry topics or strategy uh for the upcoming csin at june 2020 examination that will be conducted in the month of september so i've already made the strategy for organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry for which i will give you the link over here on the top right corner so um when it comes to physical chemistry um let me tell you for what kind of students this video is going to be helpful uh, particularly those who are not very strong with physical chemistry and want to do some selective preparation so let's say you have a good command over organic and inorganic chemistry um, and you need to do, do some topics from physical chemistry or let's say you are restarting your preparation and you do not have to do like you do not have the time to do all the topics from physical chemistry so for those sort of students this video is going to be very helpful otherwise if you are someone who has already prepared things well uh, this video might not be that useful okay i'll try to keep it short and crisp so unlike my physical and uh, sorry inorganic and organic chemistry strategy videos wherein i described each and every topic in detail like each and every subtopic within a topic as well over here i'm going to give you a broad overview of the topics and what I've done is I've analyzed the last eight exams uh, that is from June 2018 to June 2021 and in December 2019 and June 2020 uh, there were two examinations. So uh, because of the um, uh, cyclone in Tamil Nadu there was a separate exam uh, for students from that state and then in December 2019 there, was, there were floods in Assam so there was a separate exam for those students. So that is why there were two exams for December 2019 and June 2020. And then in December 2020, we did not have an exam. And in December 2021 also, we did not have an exam. Uh, additionally, uh, today itself at 7 o'clock, I have a 60-day strategy uh, class, which is a live class. Okay, so I'll be teaching it live. This is a recorded session, but that is going to be live. It's a free session. So you'll find the link to that down in the description box. Okay, so let's get started. All right. So see. Uh, there are five or six major topics for example kinetics quantum spectroscopy thermodynamics group theory electrochemistry right these are the ones that carry a major chunk of your weightage in physical chemistry and these are the topics which are asked very frequently in the exam as well but the problem is that uh, <clears throat> some of these topics are quite vast and uh, the kind of questions that are framed from these topics is uh, is quite different in every exam okay so for example, what I mean by that is if you take uh, kinetics, chemical kinetics, even though there are three or four questions in every exam, yet the, those three or four questions are highly predictable. They are from a very, very uh, similar topic. Like for example, over here I've written kinetics. If you see from the last eight exams or even before that as well, the questions have been from the order of a reaction that whether it's first order, zero order for the second order. Uh, related to its units that a unit is given and they are asking you that okay it's a, it's, is it a zero order reaction first order uh, re related to the half life of a reaction uh, then uh, amount of reactant that has been consumed after a particular time so for all those kind of reactions the uh, formula is given then activation energy questions on your activation energy uh, steady state approximation and your Michaelis maintain kinetics so these are very very uh, well known topics and it has been seen time and again that the questions are asked from the same topic itself okay whereas if, if i talk about a topic of uh, let's say quantum or even electrochemistry for that matter the kind of questions that are asked do not really have a pattern quantum still has some pattern but according to me in electrochemistry there is no pattern so that is why if you are someone who has who's restarting uh, his or her preparation or you are someone who does not have a very strong command over physical chemistry and is looking to do selective topics then uh, like i said this strategy is going to be really helpful okay <clears throat> so if i talk about kinetics so like i said kinetics generally has four questions on an average in every exam it sometimes it is three sometimes it is five but on an average there are four questions and the questions are related to like i mentioned over here uh, graphical questions that what will the pl uh, plot of let's say uh, order of a reaction versus time or something of that sort okay then uh, half life um, then some numericals based on order of a reaction uh, then activation energy steady state approximation and enzyme enzy enzymatic reactions for example michaelis maintain kinetics and line weaver berg plot so majority of questions in kinetics are uh, asked from this topic and that is why i have uh, mentioned kinetics at the top 
okay because it's something which is uh, asked in each and every exam so it has a very consistent frequency uh, as well and apart from that the kind of questions that are asked are comparatively simpler to answer then if i talk about solid state this is a must do topic because it requires very less time for preparation and two questions are always there in each exam okay one generally is a two marker and the other is a four marker so we have um, uh, what do you call we have questions from Bra bragg's law particularly numerical based questions uh, then a question on density formula d is equal to zm by a cube na okay then some uh, recently there have been questions on miller indices uh, then one standard question is between uh, relationship between the edge length and the radius of different lattices sometimes the question is asked on lattices itself for example uh, what is the relationship between the between the sides of a monoclinic lattice okay or of a triclinic lattice like that so these are some of the very straightforward questions that are asked from solid state um, and uh, i mean it does not take a lot of time to prepare if i talk about spectroscopy then in spectroscopy majority of questions come from raman uh, spectroscopy or raman rotational okay and then either pure rotational and pure vibrational so these are the major questions and you can see over here three questions on an average come from uh, spectroscopy now these sometimes the question might be from epr spectroscopy but epr spectroscopy we have already discussed in inorganic uh, chemistry section and sometimes there is a question from nmr also so you, there there have been a couple of questions from nmr but major, majorly if you see in the last eight exams the questions have been from either raman rotational or vibrational or raman rotational okay and most of them have been numericals sometimes you can also expect a question on for example uh, which of the molecules is raman active or which of the molecules is rotationally active or uh, you know what which one of the following molecules is a symmetric top molecule okay so these are the sort of questions that are asked from spectroscopy now if i talk about quantum a lot of you are afraid okay because let's say you are not from a mathematical background you have not done calculus uh, and i can understand these are very gen genuine um, you can say queries and problems so what you will see is that on an average now quantum does have a lot of weightage i cannot deny that it has around six questions right so that is actually a lot so what you could do is uh, i have listed down some of the easier topics that you can um, kind of like go through uh, they have been asked very frequently okay uh, and apart from that they carry some weightage so are out of these six questions maybe if you do these topics you can answer three to four questions and that is a that is a good number because most of the questions that are asked from quantum are four markers so even if you get three or four right uh, straight away you are getting 12 to 16 marks okay so these are some of the topics commutator atomic structure operators um so operators like hermitian operator which one of the following operators satisfies the criteria of being a hermitian operator okay uh, atomic structure is basically your uncertainty principle um your uh, what do you call photoelectric effect those uh, those sort of prerequisites before the quantum era started uh you know bohr's model those those sort of questions uh, then uh, we have uh, 1d 2d and 3d box okay so just have a basic idea of how to calculate different parameters in 1d 2d 3d box it does not require a lot of mathematical background then degeneracy uh, you just okay if you don't want to do the questions uh, that come from variation perturbation or if you have troubles at least you should be aware of the theorems that what does variation theorem say and what does perturbation theorem says because sometimes there are statement based questions that uh, according to perturbation theory theory or per perturbation theorem which one of the following statements is true so like that you can see some questions and then you can do some um, uh, questions related to huckel okay uh, huckel theory and if you have time just have a look at the formula for harmonic oscillator and lastly uh, this is something if you want you can mug up because uh, sometimes straight away questions are asked from hydrogen atom okay so what is the wave function that defines a hydrogen atom h2 molecule or what is a wave function which describes uh, uh, you know um, a helium uh, helium molecule or which of the following uh, wave functions describes uh, h2 positive okay so these sort of straight straightforward questions are sometimes also asked so there is a way that you can calculate the wave function and that would be really helpful so these are some of the topics that you can do from quantum uh, which which will basically help you get 
at least decent amount of marks and you might not be clueless in the exam right now next is thermodynamics so thermodynamics i have highlighted over here in green because in june 2021 there were questions from statistical thermodynamics they were from the classical thermodynamics you you did not find many questions so that is why i have this um uh, you can you can say intuition or i i am predicting this that this time around there will be at least three questions from classical thermodynamics so generally on an average from thermodynamics we have four questions so that is including classical thermodynamics and statistical thermodynamics but like i said in june 2021 what happened all the questions were from statistical thermodynamics uh, i don't think there was there was any question from classical thermodynamics so this time i expect a lot of questions from classical thermodynamics now <clears throat> thermodynamics itself is a very vast topic okay so if you have two months to prepare you really apart from inorganic and organic you cannot really give a lot of time to individual topics so in thermodynamics also a majority of questions are asked from these topics which i have listed down over here one is from the work done like for example what will be the work done in adiabatic expansion or you know what will be the work done at at constant temperature or what will be the work done in a isobaric process okay those sort of questions uh then uh, you can also do carnot cycle you should be well aware of maxwell's equation then questions are asked from the entropy and enthalpy of mixing that if two uh, like if two substances are mixed together what will be the enthalpy of mixing or what will be the entropy of mixing you will see a lot of questions in the gate exam also from this topic so for practice you can uh, you you can do some questions from the gate exam also and if i talk about statistical thermodynamics please do partition function at least you should be aware of the numericals that is the formula uh, for different kinds of uh, like rotational partition function translational uh, partition function and then how to calculate microstates so if the, you do these topics i think uh, it out of the, out of the four questions that are asked you will be easily able to do three of these questions okay then group theory is something that had a lot of weightage in june 2021 uh, it had four questions so i don't think more than two questions will come this year but anyway group theory is also something which has been consistently asked in the exam so you can just see that on an average three questions come from group, group theory and group theory is also not a very uh, lengthy topic if you uh, prepare well you can have some command over it in in a very short span of time so generally questions from group theory uh, uh, like are asked from point group like they will give you a molecule and they will ask what is the point group of that molecule whether it is c2v or c4h something like that then symmetry elements that uh, a combination of symmetry elements is sometimes asked that if we apply two symmetry elements together then what will be the uh, output okay like what will be the final symmetry element then uh, some some questions related to reducible irreducible representations then what transitions are allowed what transitions are disallowed uh, then in 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 the in the table some values will be missing so you basically need to find the missing values uh, for that you can use the grand orthogonality theorem okay then we have polymers and surface so polymers one question is uh, asked on an average in every exam and from surface two questions are asked on the average and again over here in, in especially in surface chemistry the kind of questions that have been asked are highly predictable so majority of questions in the last eight exams from surface have either come from langmuir adsorption isotherm or they have come from surface tension so basically the questions on surface tension are basically uh, like numericals and uh, langmuir adsorption isotherm has theoretical questions that means conceptual questions as well as numericals and then this is a very basic thing you can do physiosorption versus chemiosorption and even though polymers only has one question but then again like i said the syllabus of polymers is quite limited so what you can do is you can just practice some previous year questions from polymers and that should be good enough generally you will see that uh, not very conceptual questions are asked from polymers it's it's uh, most of the time a numerical and uh, it is directly based on the formula that you just apply the formula and you get the answer now there are some other miscellaneous topics that you could potentially do for example chemical potential somehow has been time and again asked in the exam questions based on chemical potential then atomic and molecular term symbols this is also a part of inorganic chemistry uh, colligative properties so you can just do the formulas because 
I have seen that every now and then after two two examinations, they will introduce you you know you to colligative properties. They will ask you questions based on freezing point or they will ask you questions based on osmotic pressure. So you should have a basic idea of the formula. Then we have uh, okay. So these questions again sometimes are asked, and uh, this does not require much preparation. Like you can just have a look at the formula for variance, the formula for standard deviation. uh what are significant figures and how to calculate it and uh, how to calculate error in in certain values so these are some very general aptitude based questions but these are asked in the physical chemistry section now <clears throat> i have see there are other topics also for example phase transitions are a uh, phase transition is there electrochemistry is there conductance is there um equilibria is there but i have not really uh, added them to the main section because uh first of all they are not uh, consistent like in one exam there will be a question from phase transition in the other exam it might not be there and the weightage is also not that great similar with conductance also conductance also it's a, it's a very long large topic and sometimes you will see a question is there and that too only one question would be there or sometimes there is no question and then even with equilibria also the same thing is there that's why i've not included them in the main section but anyhow if you have the time you can definitely prepare them as well electrochemistry is one topic uh, which will have some weightage at least two questions are asked in every exam but yet i have kept it in the uh, supplementary section and the reason behind that is very simple that like i said it's a lengthy topic and the kind of questions that are asked do not have any sort of um, predictability like the kind of questions that are asked in each and every exam are very different from the previous exam so that is why i have not included yet if you want to prepare electrochemistry you can do that and for those of you who are looking to have a basic idea you can just you know do some questions related to how to calculate the cell potential uh, the nost equation and then how the cell potential is related to thermodynamic parameters so if you can do this much i think you you can score uh, really well from the physical chemistry portion right and i just wanted to repeat that uh, today itself i am having a class um a live class uh, which is for a 60 day strategy for the csn net exam and the link to that will be down in the description box so you can check that out the class is starting from 7 pm right so anyway i hope you found this video helpful if you did please give this video a big thumbs up and also if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do that it these kind of videos take a lot of effort and uh, i would really appreciate if you can subscribe to the channel so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video very soon take care and bye bye hey guys so i am a verified educator on an academy and along with that i am also available on the unacademy plus platform where i am taking live classes along with other educators so in case you are interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the unacademy plus platform using my referral code that is sethi sethi and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you are not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the unacademy for that all you need to do is go to the unacademy website or download the unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is act once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the unacademy platform all right